Sex is the life force energy that runs through us all. Can you use sexual energy for your spiritual evolution or perhaps for emotional healing? Is it even possible? Clinical sexologist Dr. Martha Tara Lee will explore all these and more on Eros Evolution on Home Times Radio. everyone. My name is Lola Davina. I'm the author of Thriving in Sex Work, Heartfelt Advice for Staying Sane in the Sex Industry. Uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in uh, this, this afternoon. We were hoping, uh, I was hoping to have a conversation with Dr. Martha Tara Lee, sexologist. Uh, unfortunately, she has uh, been called away and I'm hoping that she will uh, be joining me here soon. But for right now, it's just me talking. Um, this is a lovely opportunity for me to talk about my new book, which I'm very excited about. Um, for those of you who know who I am, uh, you may know that I was a sex worker for many years. I uh, started as a stripper back when I was 22 years old, which would have been uh, more than 25 years ago now. Uh, I then graduated to becoming a dominatrix. I uh, did some work as a porn star, and I eventually settled into my most favored pr profession, which was escorting. Uh, I, w I floated in and out of the, of the sex industry for about 15 years um, and retired about 12 years ago. So uh, when I was done with all that, uh, it took me a few, I took some year, some time off, I took some years off. Um, and uh, But sex work was something that always stayed with me. It was something that I uh, always felt very passionately attached to. Um, the friendships that I made as a sex worker more than 25 years ago have been some of the most important relationships of my entire life. These are friends that uh, remain with me to this day. So even though I was out of sex work, I was no longer doing the work, um, it wasn't a part of my active life, it was still very much a part of my imagination and my worldview. I was inspired about two and a half years ago to sit down and write a book um, about those experiences, um, but rather than writing a memoir or a biography, which I know is a very popular format for sex workers, I've, I've certainly read many of them. Uh, there are many sex workers who have shared their stories over the years. I felt that there was a gap. There was a need to uh, talk directly to other sex workers about the experience. Um, I'm of the opinion, um, this is just my opinion, you don't have to agree with me, um, that sex workers do a lot of work turning their faces to the wider world and explaining what it is they do for a living and why it is they do it. Um, you can read many interviews of sex workers. And, and by the way, I should just say for listeners, I, unfortunately, I don't have Martha here to ask me questions. <laughs> so I'm a, I, if I, I may be running ahead of myself. Um, so it always helps to have an interviewer kind of rein you in. Uh, when I'm talking about sex work, many people, maybe most people think of prostitution. Um, but I, uh, and that, and I know there are viewers listening all over the world that that might, they may, in your mind, it may be a very equal equation between sex worker and prostitution. Uh, but for the purposes of this book, I'm writing about anyone who turns other people on for a living, anyone who is selling their sexuality for a living. So that could be a phone sex worker or somebody who's doing cam work online or someone who's engaged in full service sex, um, including professional domination or stripping. Anyway, I, I just wanted to clear that up. When, I, when I'm talking about sex work, I, I'm talking about the generalized greater sex industry and not just people engaged in prostitution. Sometimes people get lost in this conversation when they're only thinking about um, escorting or prostitution when they hear the term sex worker. Uh, anyway, um, I was thinking about how sex workers of all different stripes, of all different genders, of all different varieties have spent so much time uh, being interviewed, um, being uh, in documentaries, and writing their own stories, um, essentially explaining themselves to the wider world. 
I just, as I said before, I felt there was a gap. There was something needed. Uh, there were people uh, that 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 sex workers deserve to have help and support in doing the work. And I just felt like there was not enough uh, of that out there. In fact, I felt like it was very, uh, very little of organized, um, heartfelt information about how to take care of yourself doing this very emotional work. So I got inspired to write this book. And uh, when I sat down to write it, I asked myself two questions. Um, I, with every, with every time I sat down to write, with every page, with every chapter, uh, I gave myself the task of answering two questions. The first was, um, how did I do it when I was doing this work? And the second was, how could I do it better? Looking back on it uh, with some distance and with some more life experience. And so uh, that's what I did. I sat down to write this book, uh, Thriving in Sex Work, Heartfelt Advice for Staying Sane in the Sex Industry. And I hope that the intention is right there in the title. It was my intention to write something for people uh, who perhaps are struggling in sex work. Now, for those of you who are listening right now who aren't engaged in the sex industry, um, perhaps there's some misconceptions or some myths or some, I don't know, some fantasies or some, you know, some some held beliefs about the industry that, you know, you don't have any direct experience for you don't know exactly why you feel or believe that you do, but you just do. Um, and one of those beliefs might be that sex work is all about sex. It's, you know, all about your body, having a body and being sexual with another person or being sexual online or talking dirty uh, or dressing up in sexy clothes, um, figuring out those hot dance moves on a, on a pole. <laughs> all of those things are very important. Um, those are important skills to have, but I think anyone who has done the work for a while would be able to tell you that the most important thing about sex work is what we call emotional labor. It's about the the work of figuring out what it is that you're feeling and figuring out what the other person is feeling and trying to connect with that other person. Um, and we state that very crassly as saying, you know, turning another person on. I mean, which of course is, that's very much what the work is about, right? I mean, sex work is about getting paid to turn another person on. But it turns out that turning people on for a living stirs up tremendous amounts of emotion. Many, many different emotions rise to the surface. And uh, the ones that I write about in the book, the ones that felt most prevalent to me are fear. There's a, fear is a huge part of sex work. The work itself can be very dangerous. It, um, it can be physically dangerous. It can be emotionally dangerous. It can also be legally dangerous for many people in many parts of the world. There can be legal uh, repercussions. It can be socially dangerous because there's a lot of stigma attached to, to the work. So fear is a huge part of this job, um, anticipating that bad things might possibly happen. There can be violence, there can be legal consequences, there can be uh, emotional consequences if somebody finds out. Um, so that's a huge part of the work right there. Another issue that I talk about at length is shame. Because certainly, I, this is probably is not breaking news to most of you, regardless of your uh, connection to sex work, whether you've done it yourself or ever been a client or just only heard about it on TV or seen it on the internet, that a tremendous amount of shame is surrounding the sex industry. Uh, and and just simply the act of, of either buying or selling sexuality. For many people, this is not a comfortable thing. This is not um, This is not something that they're proud of. This is something that they are ashamed of. Now, there are many different ways to look at shame in sex work. Um, I've thought about it from many different angles. Certainly, uh, some of it is derived from our society's views on sexuality, that it should be safe for a special someone. And if you don't share, if, if, you, if you are sexual with another person and you aren't romantically really, um, 
involved with them, if you're not uh, emotionally committed to them, then there's something wrong or bad or dirty or pathetic about that sex. And for many of us, that that thought is shameful. Um, I certainly understand where it comes from. Uh, I certainly see it in action all the time. I certainly be, see it being enforced in movies and books and and in our culture on a daily basis. But thinking about it, uh, I, my my response to that would be, life is very long. Um, we are sexual creatures for almost our entire lives, certainly our entire adult lives, hopefully, most of us. And the thought that all of us, every single one of us, is going to be sexually fulfilled by, I don't know, some special one other person, I suppose, um, every day for the rest of our lives, um, or barring that, that we remain celibate or perhaps we <laughs> masturbate discreetly, um, and that's really constitutes our entire sex life, is it's really quite limiting. It's, it's really, it's quite a small vision. Um, and the fact is, is that many of us, if not most of us, will experience times in our lives when we do not have a willing and able partner, when we don't have someone who can meet our sexual needs. Um, and if we can just, if we could all just as a, as a culture and as a society, just take a step back and be a little bit more, I don't know, kind or compassionate about that fact, um, I think that would go a long way to leasing ourselves of some of this stigma and burden that we have around sexuality in general and paid sexuality in particular. We're coming up on a break now. We're coming up on a break and I'll be right back. Your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media, one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community, and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. Hi, I'm Kelly Fox, host and astrologer of The Astrology Show. Each week, I'll give you access to the current transits, which are a valuable tool that provide astrological information to help unlock the potential each of us has. Understanding the stars can help steer us in the right direction to make better informed choices. So if you're wondering what's going to happen in your week ahead, be sure to tune in to The Astrology Show for guidance. Mondays at 9pm Eastern Time. Every two minutes, an American is sexually assaulted. The majority of victims know their attacker. It could be your friend, your neighbor, or someone you met at a party. If you said no, it's rape, and it's a crime. This is Christina Ricci with RAIN. Call the National Sexual Assault Hotline today at 1-800-656-HOPE or visit RAIN.org. That's R-A-I-N-N dot O-R-G. Brought to you by RAIN and this station. Hi, this is Lola Davina. I'm back. And unfortunately, Dr. Martha Tara Lee, sexologist, has not been able to join me this hour. So it's just me. <laughs> so I am talking about my new book, Thriving in Sex Work, Heartfelt Advice for Staying Sane in the Sex Industry. And I'm sorry for not doing this sooner. I forgot to mention that this is an ebook that's out right now. It's available on iTunes, uh, Barnes & Noble, uh, Nook, and Kindle as well as all the other um, ebook platforms that are out there. And I la will be launching the paperback version of this book July 15th. So uh, I was talking about before the break some of the uh, negative emotions that arise when doing sex work, which uh, I think if you are a sex worker or if you're a client of a sex worker, if you're somebody who, who frequents uh, the, the services of sex workers. These are emotions that might be familiar to you that, that uh, might be, um, this might strike a chord when I talk about this. 
Um, but I would also just like to say, I think that these negative emotions certainly are not unique to the um, intersection of sexuality and uh, commerce. Uh, these emotions are, are ones that arise for many, if not most of us, when we're sexual at some time or another. So uh, I'm hoping that uh, during this conversation holds something that's helpful for everyone, even if you yourself are not a sex worker and or not a client of one. So before the break, I was talking about fear uh, and mentioning the fact that fear is a very prevalent emotion throughout the sex industry. Um, Many of us work in fear. Many of us uh, struggle with many different levels of fear, from um, the, the, the fear of something truly dreadful happening, like physical violence, uh, to kind of gnawing anxieties, to, to, to insecurities. Then I mentioned shame. Uh, the next is self, uh, low self-esteem. And uh, this, is, this was certainly a topic that was near and dear to my heart when I was working, because uh, although I never thought that there was anything wrong with sex work, I was never particularly ashamed of the work. Um, I, f I frequently struggled with feelings of not being good enough. Um, and uh, even to the, I mean, sometimes to the point of really kind of, it was kind of ridiculous um, because I, I was actually quite good at the work. I, I, I uh, amassed a very loyal clientele. I was able to charge what for me felt like a lot of money. It was, it was enough money certainly to make the, wor the work worth it to me. Um, I, I was making six figures a year for many years on end. Um, so it, it, certainly the objective evidence was not there that there was something wrong uh, or so that I wasn't good enough for the work, um, that I wasn't attractive enough or, or, or something like that. But I, I still wrestled with those feelings uh, on a daily basis. Um, I would have to work myself up to see each and every client, even even clients that I saw for years, even <laughs> clients that knew me very, very well. Um, I still was, was always very insecure. So I talk quite a bit about low self-esteem, uh, and I talk about what it feels like to be sexual uh, when you don't feel attractive. Uh, when you're struggling with, with body image, um, when you're feeling like you're too old for the work, or these are, these are terrible feelings. And I think these are, it's certainly not unique to people who do it, who are, again, who are sexual for a living. I think this is something that we all struggle with as sexual beings. Um, that feeling of being insecurity, that I'm, I'm somehow not good enough. And, uh, even, even when people are telling you all the time with, with, possibly wanting to have sex with you or possibly being willing to pay you money that you are more than adequate. In fact, that you are the one that they want. You are the one that they want right now. So that, that, that insecurity is, is something that I think many of us struggle with. Um, so I talk about that at length. Uh, the next negative emotion that I discuss at length in my book is anger. Because if there is one emotion that I think pervades the sex industry, um, it perhaps is the most visible face of the sex industry, that is anger. Um, I spend quite a bit of time online uh, interacting with sex workers all day. I spend quite a bit of time watching them vent and rant and uh, talk about the way that clients and potential clients treat them about the disrespect and the game playing that they're continually encountering. And uh, I can just also say from my own experiences that many, many, many of the clients that I dealt with, certainly not all of them, but many, many, many were angry, angry people. Um, I think it's easy to say, first off the top, that people who are paying for sexuality are struggling with issues of shame, like I mentioned before, and and issues of resentment. Uh, I don't think it's I don't think it's going out on a limb. I don't think it's too broad a generalization to say that for many people, if they're not getting the sex that they want in their lives, they are angry and resentful, um, and probably on some level dealing with feelings of of, of low self esteem themselves. Um, not liking themselves or, or feeling like there was something wrong with them. 
Um, and as sex workers on a daily basis, we're basically asked to deal with these folks, right? These are the folks who are coming to us for our services. These are the folks who uh, answer our ads and show up at our strip clubs and uh, show up at our dungeons with a lot of conflicted feelings. Um, anger drives a lot of really bad behavior in, in sex work. Um, it, 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 it is when you, when you start off already angry about having to pay for something that you think you should be able to get for free, um, that is not a good place to start. Like when I go to Starbucks in the morning or my local coffee joint, I expect to pay for a cup of coffee. So I'm not really crabby when, uh, when I, uh, get my coffee that I'm asked to pay for or $5, um, that, that I, Walking in the door, I know that that is part of the exchange. No one's going to give me a cup of coffee just because they like my smile. Sexuality is something different. From a very early age, we're taught there are certain things that we have to say and certain things that we have to do in certain ways that we have to behave in order to get sex. We have to look a certain way. We have to smell a certain way. We have to know how to talk to people. We have to have ways to impress people all in order to get them to be close to us. Um, if for some reason in your life you're not getting that and you still want to have sex, certainly paying for it is one way to get it. But there is that speed bump, that emotional speed bump that many, many clients face when they uh, have to pay for something that maybe they would much rather be getting for free. Um, so anger is an enormous saturation. It's a, it's a, it's a pre it's prevalent. It's something that's always in the air uh, when you are a sex worker, it's something you're always having to deal with. Um, at the same time, um, when, when, when you're a sex worker yourself and you're encountering a, a client who's, who's behaving badly, well, it's pretty easy to act with anger in return. It's pretty, when you're, when you're already um, exposed, when you're putting yourself out there as a sexual person, you're putting, you're uh, exposing yourself legally, um, physically, in all these different ways. You're making yourself available. You're, you're showing, you know, this this very personal and authentic side of yourself. Um, it's hard when people come up and they don't respect you. They don't respect your boundaries. They don't. They don't want to have to pay. They think they can call you names. So there's a lot of bad behavior in, in the sex industry and. That contributes enormously to burnout. That, that, that's, that's one of the things that I think people find the hardest doing this work. It's just the, the kind of grinding disrespect um, and deflection of anger. So the fifth and final uh, negative, major negative emotion that I write about in Thriving and Sex Work is envy. And envy is a terrible emotion. I, I can certainly speak with personal experience how corrosive and difficult envy can be. Um, but many of us are never taught to even express our envy or, or to, to put it into words or to, to, to ever talk about it. It's, it's very shameful to say, oh, I wish I had what you had. I wish I, I, wish I were like you. That could be, that can be, terrible to feel and, it, and even worse to um, express to another person. But there's a tremendous amount of envy in the sex industry. Both sexuality and money, these are two enormous markers of success and status in our, in our society. So uh, you look at somebody, you see somebody and you think, oh, that person, they're so sexy, they're so gorgeous, they, they have it all. They, 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 they have everything that I've ever wanted. This is this is not easy. Um, I can think of many times when I was uh, working as a stripper, and I'd walk into the dressing room, and I'd just look around, and I'd see all these just unbelievably gorgeous women, and I'd just think, what the hell am I doing here? <laughs> Why would I ever think that I could compete with women who are this beautiful? Um, and uh, there's also a lot of envy between clients and sex workers, right? Clients want what sex workers have, which is sex 
right? They, they, the clients look at sex workers and think, oh, you get to be sexual all day if I could only do this, if I could, if I could only live in your world rather than just being a visitor who's invited only as long as my money holds out, right? And there's a lot of, uh, a lot of envy that sex workers display towards their clients. Uh, because clients, of course, they have money, they have status, they have jobs, they have all the things you know, that the sex workers are lacking. So there's an enormous divide there between sex workers and clients. And uh, there's a lot of envy that, run, run, um, that flows between the two of them. So these are, uh, these are unexamined issues that I think, unless you can see this stuff clearly, it can, if you're a sex worker, this stuff can eat you alive and contribute to burnout and, and to, to, to very negative feelings. So those are the five. Uh, those are the five uh, what I call demons or negative emotions that are quite pervasive all throughout sex work. Uh, just to recap: fear, shame, low self-esteem, anger, and envy. But certainly, there are many, many other things to talk about in sex work. I I, uh, I have more to discuss on the other side of the break. Um, but these are the these are the dark and negative emotions that tend to come up in sex work over and over again. Uh, I've got a few more minutes here before the break. And uh, this is Lola Davina, and I'll be discussing thriving and sex work on the other side of this short break. Thank you so much. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. Ohm Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity, wellness, and personal empowerment. A philanthropic organization, their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Hi, this is Julie Geigel. And I'm Susan Schuler. And I'm Lori Walker. And we are the Psychic Angel Channelers from Angel Talk Tuesday. Tune in every week at 10 a.m. Eastern on OMTimesRadio.com. The angels have heard your call and are here to help. Are you ready to receive? Bathe in the beautiful vibrational frequency to help you heal, expand, and remember your magnificence with Angel Talk Tuesday. What's up? This is Brad and Mike from Lincoln Park for Life Beat, the music industry fights AIDS. Listen up, times are tough and you get a lot of things thrown your way. If you're being pressured to have sex and you're not ready, then say no. If you're having sex, be smart and use protection. Respect yourself and protect yourself. For more information, call the National AIDS Hotline at 1-800-342-AIDS or log on to www.lifebeat.org. Hi, this is Lola Davina. Hi, this is Lola Davina, and uh, I am uh, taking over for Dr. Martha Tara Lee this afternoon. Uh, and uh, I am discussing my new book, A Thriving in Sex Work Heartfelt Advice for Staying Sane in the Sex Industry. Uh, I was hoping to speak with Martha Lee, uh, Martha Lee today. Um, she wasn't able to join us. Uh, uh, and uh, I was hoping that she might join us now. Um, anyway, on the other side of this break, uh, I, I was, uh, I was, um, I was talking about the demons. I was talking about uh, fear and I was talking about anger that I also, uh, this book though, I didn't want it to be just about, uh, just about the negative things. Uh, yeah. Uh, I wanted to talk about positive things as well. I wanted to give, um, uh, support and uh, the best advice that I could for um, making sex work as, as good a job as it can possibly be for the folks who find themselves doing it. Um, not everyone 
should be a sex worker. Not everyone chooses to be a sex worker. Um, but it's my hope that sex work it can can grow and evolve and become a job that is better for the people who are doing it. So uh, one of the uh, one of my hopes in in uh, in uh, writing this book was to make the job better for uh, anyone who might find themselves doing this work, whether they are doing it because they love the work and they feel great about it, whether they're doing it just because they need the money or for those folks who perhaps are finding themselves uh, doing it because they really don't have any other options. Um, I was uh, perhaps Lola, uh, perhaps uh, Martha will be joining us soon, but bef uh, if she doesn't come in in the next few minutes, what I thought I might do is read the, the opening pages of my book um, because it tells the story of how I first got started as an escort, which um, it was certainly a very interesting night in my life. It was certainly um, a very memorable night in my life. And um, as you'll find out, it had uh, uh, it certainly uh, changed my life forever. Um, and uh, so I, uh, I'm going to start reading this now. This is the introduction to Thriving in Sex Work, Heartfelt Advice for Staying Sane in the Sex Industry, written by me, Lola Davina. Uh, and uh, I write a lot of this book um, directly to the reader, directly to this person uh, on the other end who uh, might be a, sex, a fellow sex worker. So that's why this book starts out the way that it does. Hi, sexy. I'm so happy to see you here. If you're holding this book in your hands, I'm guessing you're a sex worker. So am I. Let me tell you about my first call as a working girl. San Francisco, January 17th, 1991. I had been stripping at the Lusty Lady Peep Show for about a year. I was 22 years old, fresh out of college. I was shapely and fair-skinned, brunette. I was cultivating a smart and sexy persona by wearing nerd glasses on stage. I was making great money, raising hell and riding high. Are you there, Martha? Yes. No? <laughs> okay. Sorry. Hi, I Martha. How know. are you? How are you? I'm good. I'm so sorry about what happened. That's just fine. You heard. You, I was in the middle of reading my introduction, <laughs> uh, but maybe yes, you have some yes. questions for me. Uh, you know, go ahead. Re re uh, reading that. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. All right. I had done girl-on-girl -girl shows with other dancers and a few professional domination sessions with a friend, but up to that point, the job felt removed, like a sexy game. Now it was about to get real. That night I was going to the home of a major politician. He was a bit of a big damn deal, set by a, a fellow lusty dancer who had been working for a madam for the last few years. This client, I'll call him Jay, was a regular and always eager to see new girls. My friend prepped me as best she could. Jay was brusque. He wasn't a conversationalist. In fact, the more he talked, the less he liked you. He'll be all over you the minute you walk in the door, she warned. And he was energetic in bed. But she assured me if I told him I didn't like something, he would stop. All of this had me nervous enough without the kicker. I was a birthday surprise from Jay's girlfriend, Emma. And she was going to be there, too. I prepared like a bride on her wedding day, showering, shaving, inspecting every inch of my body for flaws. I was sure that I'd show up and be rejected after one look. My mind spun out all kinds of crazy scenarios. But that evening, nothing went how I imagined. Jay opened the door, a shaggy lion of a man wearing a bathrobe. Emma, she was a foxy, petite little Latina. She stood there in flawless black lingerie, stockings and high heels. They whisked me off to the bedroom, lit with dozens of candles and exactly two seconds flat. I guess they liked me just fine. The scene was alien yet familiar. Even though I was terrified, I also felt exhilarated and fascinated. Instinct kicked in, and while I never had had such spontaneous and strenuous sex with two strangers before, I found that I knew when to act, when to react, and how to shift the energy when it all got to be too much. So did Emma, apparently, because after about 15 minutes, without saying a word, she got up and left the room. When she didn't return, it became clear that she had left altogether. <laughs> Wow. Nothing in my instinct kit had prepared me for that possibility. 
Jay, however, didn't blink. He kept at his sexy phone for a few minutes more, finished, and then as we lay there in the post-coital glow, I asked him about Emma. He just shrugged. Maybe she got bored, he said. We chatted a few minutes more, and then in the most gallant fashion, he paid me and threw me out. I stepped out into the foggy San Francisco night holding two crisp $100 bills. My body was tingling. I was mortified because somehow I, I had offended Emma, and I knew that Jay would never want to see me again. But no matter, I had crossed a line. I was a prostitute now. I knew I, knew I should feel bad, but for the life of me, I couldn't think why. Instead, I was on fire. I had no way of knowing it then, but that night shaped the broad contours of the next 15 years of my life. It turned out that Jay liked me bunches, becoming my best client and remaining a friend to this day. I developed a loyal clientele. Earning stacks of bills would always be erotically charged for me, making me feel richer than my wildest dreams. Striking out as an escort on my own, I encountered the terrors of screening strangers, risking my living situation, my legal status, my life. Friends in the industry helped keep me sane, but I never felt that I measured up to their beauty or success. I dated both civilians and clients, but wrestled with jealousy and sharing my hard-earned cash. I'd obsessed that clients, cops, or the IRS would leave me penniless. Over time, I grew rageful, finding slights and hypocrisies everywhere. I struggled with loneliness and isolation, and always, 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 my situation felt precarious. In an instant, something horrible could happen, and I'd be an ex-hooker, washed up and unemployable, or worse. It never ended well for people like me in the movies. I think I'll stop there. Do you have any questions for me, Martha? Yes. One of the things um, that has come up over the last few years is uh, this term, uh, sex work is work. And um, mm -hmm. I think it's important to uh, talk about it. So I just want to say I'm sorry that I am late and uh, something <laughs> came out and it was it's, it's horrible. But anyway, uh, I'm, I'm here now and um, I, I read your book. I, I loved it. And I... I know you've been talking about the demons and how you just got you you went into you the the part in your book that you got into sex work. So I'm I'm interested to hear um, your take about uh, sex work is work is work. Yes, thank you. And I, and I'm just very glad that you managed to be here for the second half. I'm just lovely to hear your voice. Um, well, sex work is work is is a very important uh, concept. Um, I think. For many people who are outside the sex industry, this is a difficult concept to wrap your mind around. Um, but just, I'm just stating a fact. Sex workers have always been with us they're, they're, um, through, throughout time, throughout history, and throughout cultures. There, there has always been people who uh, want sexuality. They want sex. And there have been people who have been willing to provide it. And there's been some kind of exchange, like money or, or, or shelter or, or goods, something of value. So this is an old concept. Um, because sexuality is so closely wrapped up with both love and having children, however, there's always been this sort of there's always been a stigma against sex work. There's, it, there's always been something about it that people find distasteful or something that needs to be controlled um, rather than just a simple exchange, rather than saying, I'm going to go to the hair cutter. I would like to have my hair cut. Could you please cut my hair? The hair cutter says, yes, I would like $20. And we both go home happy um, from that exchange. Um, but the simple fact is, and I was making this point earlier, many, if not most of us in our lifetimes may find ourselves without a partner, um, a, a, without a sexual partner, um, without, may, not, may find ourselves not getting the sex that we want just from our ordinary everyday activities. So um, the idea, that it would be helpful, it would be gentle, it would be compassionate and kind that if we thought differently as a culture about the need or the desire for someone to be able to access sexuality by simply paying for it. Um, 
And of course, many of us do. If you, if you include porn, <laughs> porn's a pretty big industry. Many, many, many people like to look at porn. Um, but, uh, but the fact is, is that people who, who make porn, people who escort for a living, pe- people who strip and do phone sex, this is a job for them. It is work for them. Um, and the idea that this is somehow, it's either easy or it's um, something that, uh, I don't know, they should be doing for free. Um, it's, a very, it's, a, it's culturally very hard for people to get over. Um, but the simple fact is, is that sex is a human need. And um, if someone's willing to provide it and they're willing to do a good job, they're, they're good at it and they can get paid for it, that's work. That's like any other job. Um, the definition of work is getting paid to do something we wouldn't otherwise do. That's that's straight up what, what work is. Most of us, you know, bus drivers don't go in on their days off and just ride buses around for fun. They, they do it for a paycheck. And a sex worker is no different. So that's an... Um, that's a, it's a, if it's something that I would hope that as a culture we could start moving towards, which is a, just the simple acceptance that uh, sexuality is something that uh, many of us want and need throughout our lives. We may not be able to get it, um, and the simplest and most straightforward and gentlest way to get it would be to pay for it. And if that's the case, then we should be nice to the people who provide that service. Mm. That's beautiful. That's uh, that's really important to talk about it. I think uh, much of society, uh, as your book mentioned, um, if they knew a sex worker, they would think of sex work a lot more positive. I think you're right. I think you're right, Martha. I do think it's it's much like it's very it's much like uh, the LGBT community that uh, exposure is is really important. Yeah. So let's talk more about it after the break. the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Join me, Tammy Adams, intuitive life coach and spiritual healer, for my new show, Karma Talk. Learn how to get rid of your karma so that you can start living the life you are meant to live. I am not going to tell you what you want to hear, but what you need to hear. Join me on Wednesday at 12 p.m. Eastern Time for Karma Talk on Om Time Radio. It's on us to stop sexual assault. To get in the way before it happens. To get a friend home safe. And to not blame the victim. It's on us. To look out for each other. To, to not, not look, look the other way. way. It's on us to stand up. To step in. To take responsibility. It's on us. All of us. To, to stop, stop sexual, sexual assault. assault. Learn how. And take the pledge at itsonus.org. Welcome to the last 15 minutes of today's show. I missed uh, half of it uh, because I was hella out. Uh, long story. But uh, we are with Lola De- Devina, and she has spent a tw- more than 25 years in and around the sex industry, working as a stripper, dominatrix, porn actress, and escort over a 15-year period. She has earned a Master's of Arts in Human Sexuality and a Master's of Science in Nonprofit Fundraising. Uh, she writes a self-care and wellness column for why not uh, cam.com that's uh, alphabet why not cam uh, cam.com it's a support website for cam models that's fantastic 
and she's here because I um, am uh, friends with her on Facebook and saw that she has a book called Thriving in Sex Work, Heartfelt Advice for Staying Sane in the Sex Industry and as preparation for the show, I uh, uh, read the book. Uh, it's available in paperback on Amazon and in ebook format from Amazon Kindle, iTunes, and everywhere ebooks are sold. And you can find her at Lola com and of course uh, Lola Dash Davina on Twitter. And uh, you can also find her on Facebook. Just look up her name. So, yes, uh, so Lola, we were beginning to talk about the importance of. Um, um, sex, recognizing sex as sex work, uh, sex work as work, <laughs> and yeah. um, that, <laughs> and um, that um, uh, people who know uh, sex workers think of sex work a lot more positive, because um, that's how you are able to, I guess, contextualize and actually link the fact that um, there are sex workers who. Uh, are doing it by choice and who uh, do feel positive about their work and uh, make a good uh, uh, living out of it. Well, yes. Um, well, I, I would. I would. Separate, I would. Separate, I would separate a couple things out of that. Uh, oops, I'm getting. I'm getting weird feedback now. I'm hearing myself talk. Um, well, first of all, to say that um, one of the reasons why I think sex workers um, are frequently it's they face a lot of strange reactions you know there could be stigma there could be um hostility it's hard to see sex workers as human i think for many people um because when you think about it when you see sex workers they're 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 in a fantasy realm um they're 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 fulfilling someone's sexual fantasies which is not where most of us spend our our days um it's quite unusual um so there's a there's a there's a, uh, what can I say? It makes some people feel uneasy or strange or weird. Um, maybe because they feel kind of strange, you know, or have some, some mixed feelings about their own sexualities. Um, but I'm just here to say that each and every sex worker alive is a fully fledged human being. Um, anyone you've ever seen in porn, anyone you've ever seen at a strip club, anyone you've ever seen advertising, any kind of sexuality. This is just a person just like you and me. They have to go and shop for groceries. They have children. They have dogs. They have they have lives. Um, so what you what you say is very true, Martha, that um, getting to know a sex worker, just, just even meeting one in any capacity, I think for, for many people, is an eye-opening experience. Uh, and to realize that sex workers are not some alien creature, you know, alien species. They're just like you and me. Um, but you also, in your question, I think you bring up a very interesting point that, that's difficult for a lot of people, which is the, the, the fear or the feeling that, that most, if not all, sex workers uh, do sex work because they have to. And it, it's true that many do. Many There are people, who, there are many people, of course, as you know, all over the world who are forced into sex work, um, which is terrible. Human, human trafficking, trafficking and, and, and being forced to do things sexually you don't want to do. Uh, for survival yeah. reasons, is 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 uh, a terrible place for anyone to be at, in, and so yeah. there's, you know, I can understand that knee jerk that that reaction, you know, like oh, you're having sex with strangers and you don't want to do it, but you're doing it anyway for some, whatever your motivation is, um, and I, that is a difficult emotional speed bump for many people to get over, and I understand that, I I understand why 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 that makes people outside the sex industry uneasy. And if I had any advice for someone who was having those feelings come up, I guess what I would just say is if you have a, if you have sex workers in your life, you know, talk to them. I mean, ask them, ask them about how they got into the work and how they feel about the work. Um, I think what you'll find is, is that there is a very wide range of reasons why people are in sex work from, just absolutely being at their wit's end and having no other choice to feeling like it's the thing the the work that best fits into their schedule, uh, perhaps because they're going to school or they're raising children. It's something that they can do in, at odd hours um, to people who do it because they enjoy it or they feel a call. It's a calling or an aptitude um, that there are a wide range of reasons why people get into sex work. And that reason might change over the course of their lives. 
Um, mm. Somebody might find themselves doing it, you know, for a while because they absolutely have to. Then they learn, then they get to the point where they like the work better. Um, there are people I've certainly seen who like the work very much when they started out, and by the time they left it, they were very unhappy with the sex industry and they needed to get out for their sanity. So um, even within any individual sex worker, the story may not always be the, the same and fixed over time. There may be, their motivations may change over time. So I, I, it, it's just, it, it, you know, it, it is a big complex issue. Um, and, and if you're not involved in the sex industry, it can seem very mysterious. But uh, I think, you know, the more you, you spend time with the issue, you realize that, that it is, it's complex. It's not just one good thing. It's not just one bad thing. It's, it's many different things all mixed up together. Mm. Yes. That's beautiful. Thank you. Um, I appreciate you um, talking about the different shades of um, sex work. And um, uh, in your book, you talk uh, extensively about um, self-care and even about um, uh, managing moods around the winter time. Uh, and uh, mm -hmm. there was a part that I really thought was very important to mention, which is uh, the role of money and uh, the relationship that we have with money, planning um, uh, to have a future and uh, being good with your money. Uh, and one of yeah. the things you talked about is um, uh, even this practice of uh, pasting money uh, using um, funny um, fridge magnets to the fridge to uh, get rid of any kind of negative energy. So tell us about that. Yes, well, it's a huge subject. Um, actually, the next book I plan on writing will be Sex, Work, and Money. But yes, a month, uh, mm -hmm. just a sec as you as you could tell me better, this is what you studied for so long, Martha. Um, sexuality is very, <laughs> very emotional. Well, so yeah. is money. Um, and many people have deep-seated uh, beliefs about money and stories about money that are unexamined. Um, and when you exchange your sexuality for money, that, that money can come and uh, start taking on an enormous story or meaning that, that maybe like a regular paycheck might not, right? Um, many of us get into sex work because it's, it's the richest that it might make us ever feel in our entire lives. You know, mm -hmm. I can certainly tell you when I was making $400 an hour, I thought I was a queen. I, I mean, I couldn't believe, you know, it was just, it was so much money for me. Um, but, it, but at the same time, it wasn't enough to solve all of my money problems. Um, so it certainly, uh, I write quite a bit about taking the time to look at money and understand what money means to you. Um, and not being blinded by sex work's easy availability, easy access to money, uh, because that is something that, that, uh, Many, many sex workers start out in life, they're making great, they're making you know, hundreds of dollars an hour, and they end up with nothing to show for it. So, um, and I'm a cautionary tale, like I have my own stories to tell in the book about the mistakes I made with money that I, I would want to share and, and so that people can learn from them. So, uh, yeah, it's a big topic. I wish we had more time. I know I'm looking at the clock and I'm realizing we're getting close to the end. But, um, mm -hmm. yes, it, it, just like with sexuality, money is something that we learn about as a very young age. And uh, we need to learn sometimes again as adults and learn better than when we were taught as children. Mm, yes. Yeah, that's really important for listeners to recognize that. So very quickly, because uh, I think we just have about one minute or so, what is the link between sex and spirit for you? Yeah, well, it, 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 I think... Spirituality is something that we're always reaching for, right? It's, I think about spirituality as, as, as always a reaching for something bigger than ourselves, and sexuality is one of the ways that we try to access that. Um, certainly, I know as a professional sex worker, it, many of my clients were coming looking for something different that they couldn't find in the, from their ordinary partners, um, maybe because they couldn't be honest with, with their partners or, or maybe because their partners were limited somehow. So um, I do think that for many of us, when we're on a spiritual quest, our sexuality is one of the ways that we look for that. And sex, sex work is one of going, going to a sex worker, uh, uh, exploring Tantra, exploring different states of consciousness. This is, this is certainly some of the ways that um, human beings throughout time have access to the divine. I do think that that is something that sex work can make available to people. Mm, 
Beautiful. So uh, I so appreciate uh, you coming on to today's show. There are so many things that I think listeners are hearing for the first time and learning about sex work and learning to um, um, be illuminated. And you, uh, for you uh, listeners out there, uh, you can learn more about Lola Davina on her website, loladavina.com. And um, even if you are not a sex worker, uh, though her book is written for sex workers, I feel that you will learn a lot about sex work uh, if you get her book, which is available uh, on Amazon. Just go to her website, loladavina.com, and you will have uh, all the links there. And uh, remember, this book uh, offers support and self-care advice for managing the inevitable conflict emotions that arise from doing this challenging work. And uh, I thank uh, Lola Davina again for coming on. Next week, I have uh, Sarah Martin who's going to talk about Warrior Woman. So stay tuned to Arrow's Evolution next week. <laughs>